Hello and welcome back. For this video we'll be discussing the properties of real numbers. You will need to know these properties when explaining or justifying why you did something from one equation to turn it into an equivalent equation. The first one is the closure property. It says a plus b and a times b, when they're written side by side like this that means times, are unique real numbers. So basically they're saying if you have let's say 12 plus 5, which could be the representation of plus, that equals the real number 17. Real numbers added together produce a real number result. And then a 12 times 5, and that would equal the real number 60. So two real numbers multiplied together give you another real number. The reflexive property is kind of like uh, a mirror image. So any number is going to equal itself. So 5 is equal to 5, or negative 8 is equal to negative 8. Another time we want to turn things around is the symmetric pop property. Uh, we have if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. If we put some numbers in there, we have something like uh, 5 plus 7 is equal to 12, or that we could also write that as 12 is equal to 5 plus 7, where this could be equal to A and that could be equal to B. And that seems quite obvious, but uh, one of the reasons we might want to do that is some people simply cannot deal with variables on the right-hand side. So if I have a variable on the right-hand side, let's suppose I have an equation that looks like this. Um, 24 is equal to 2n minus 6. And some people can't deal with the n being on this side. So you could use the symmetric property to rewrite that as 2n minus 6 equals 24. Transitive property, if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then a is equal to c. And an example there might be, let's say... 4 plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 3, so this could be A and that could equal B. And we also know that 3 plus 3 is equal to 5 plus 1. Here's B and that's C. So now we're saying if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then C must also be equal to A. Transitive property. We also use that in some cases with substitution. The commutative property simply says you can reverse the order of addition or you can reverse the order of multiplication and you'll still get the same answer. So if we do 3 plus 5, which is 8, we know that that's going to still equal 5 plus 3. So you can actually physically rewrite the problem in a different order. And the same thing with multiplication. 3 times 5 is going to equal 5 times 3. You got to be careful on this one because the commutative property only works with addition and multiplication, it does not work with subtraction and division. However, every subtraction can be rewritten as an addition problem, and then you can apply this property. And every division can be rewritten as a multiplication property, which means you can then uh, rewrite this uh, commutative property with division as well. Associative property just means you can group things differently, and quite often we will use the commutative and associative properties together. So if I have 2 plus 4, and then I add 5 to that, well, we know that that's going to give us 11. But what if I took 2 plus, and then I did the 4 plus 5 first instead? Well, we'd get 9, and plus 2 more would give us 11. So we get 11 on both sides. And the same thing with multiplication. If I have a 2 times 3, and I multiply those first, and then times it by a 4, well, that be the same thing as 2 times 3 times 4, where I multiply the 3 and the 4 first. And in fact, I could multiply, if we wanted to, we could multiply the 2 and 4 first, and then come back and multiply the 3 afterwards. And that would just be another version of the associative property. Property of opposites. So a number and its opposites, this relates to addition. For each a, there is a unique real number, negative a. This is negative a, or sometimes referred to as opposite of a. A might be negative, but the opposite of that then would be positive. So it just really means opposite, such that a plus a negative a is equal to zero, or negative a plus a is equal to zero. So if I take a is equal to, let's say, five, and I add to it negative five, well, that's going to give me a value of zero. So opposites added together will always sum up to zero. And it doesn't matter which order here, negative five plus five equals zero. So this is really what you're looking at between here versus over here. You're having the 
commutative property demonstrated at the same time we're showing the property of opposites. So quite often we can use multiple properties simultaneously. Property of reciprocals. For each A that is not equal to zero, and this is very important, that it cannot equal zero, and that's because you cannot divide by zero, there is a unique real number, and that should say one over A, such that A times one over A is equal to one, and that one over A times A is equal to one. And it always comes out to a positive one. Reciprocals, when multiplied together, always come out to a positive. So a number and its reciprocal are not opposite signs, they are the same sign. So let's say that a is 5, then I times that by the reciprocal, which is 1 over 5, I will get a positive 1. Or 1 over 5 times positive 5, I will still get a positive 1. So right here we have property of reciprocals and demonstrating the commutative property at the same time. The distributive property, this allows you to multiply across addition or subtraction. I know the book only shows addition, but it's actually addition or subtraction. So we can do the first one is A times B and A times C, and what we get out of it is AB plus AC. And it doesn't matter which side the A is on. If the A is on the back side, you can still multiply across like this. The only difference is we show BA and CA instead of AB and AC. However, you'll notice the only difference between this one and this one is the commutative property of multiplication. All I do is show the multiplication of B with A instead of A and B, but you get the same answer. And we can see down here, this is the same thing, distributing across a negative <coughs> or a subtraction, and we get the same result. The only difference is we have a minus sign in there. Now, one thing you gotta be very careful here of is if I have a negative on the outside, a lot of people forget to do this. If I have an example of like negative two times 4 plus 5. Now if we do the normal order of operations, we're supposed to do 4 plus 5, we get 9. And then we times that by negative 2, and that would come out to a negative 18. So we know that the answer is supposed to be negative 18. But in order to show this, you're going to show it as a negative 2 times the 4 plus a negative 2 times the 5. And you'll notice in both cases, the negative followed the two. If you don't bring the negative all the way through on your calculation, you will get the wrong answer. Then we end up with negative eight plus negative 10, which is gonna be a negative 18. And you can see we had the same answer here. Addition property of equality. And that says if we have an example like A equals A, then A plus C is gonna equal A plus C. Notice that we will add the same amount on both sides. Now we call it the addition property of equality, but since we can rewrite all subtractions as an addition, the subtraction property quality is really the addition property quality. So I can do it with subtraction as well. If I start out with five equals five, which we obviously know is true, and then I add some amount to each side and make sure that the amount I add on both sides is exactly the same, what I will still get are two equivalent statement. We have a multiplication property of equality. Let's say we have a 10 and we multiply it by 2 and we have another 10 so 10 would equal 10 and we multiply it by 2 and we can clearly see that we're going to get 20 on both sides. If I have a 10 and then I subsequently divide it by 2 or a 10 and divide it by 2 which is the division property which is really showing the reciprocal of multiplication is going to still give me the same answer on both sides. So I had a two, two 20s up here, both equal to each other, and down here I had two fives, both equal to each other. Instead of dividing by two, we could have just taken 10 and multiplying it by a half, which is the same as dividing by two. And that's why we have it, we call this the multiplication property of equality instead of division.